Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Last summer, I did a video on how to uh, illustrate a wooden surface. And what I did is took the YouTube logo uh, and then tried to make it look like it was carved out of wood. Well, this time, we're going to make it look like it's chiseled out of stone. Uh, and uh, what we've got here is just, uh, you know, the same sort of a thing with the logo penciled out on Bristol board. Very important to use Bristol board if you want to follow along with this lesson. But what might not be uh, so clear is that what we have have here are uh, taped pieces of scrap paper, and I held off on the last part of it here. Uh, just thought I would do that uh, in real time so you can see me lining up the tape with that lower uh, pencil line of the illustration. This is all going to be sort of protecting the white surface of the paper um, and limiting where the watercolor and other stuff can uh, go later on. Well, uh, that's it that for that part of it. I want to uh, mix up a little bit of gray watercolor. Okay, so I've mixed up some gray watercolor, and I have a piece of scrap paper here, which I would advise you to have uh, handy when you're doing a project like this, just for sort of testing out before you go to the actual um, uh, Bristol board. Make sure that you've got the right shade that you want. And I definitely want one that's sort of a mid-tone gray, not too light, not, not too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, in time-lapse, cover this area right up to where the tape is, and you'll see how the tape helps... Uh, you know, keep a, a nice clean line there on all the four different sides. Okay, well you can see I just dashed that in pretty quickly. You don't have to worry too much about precision with this one because the surface of the concrete or stone is going to hide any of the mistakes that you make early on. Well, I'm going in with a darker shade of gray, and I'll do just this first bit uh, real time before uh, kicking it into time lapse. But just want to show you, uh, going for contrast here as I darken in the uh, letter Y, just going uh, really quite dark. Don't want to go absolutely black, but um, uh, the goal is going to be to make this really legible, and that means, uh, you know, having a, a pretty stark contrast with the gray uh, tone that I put down to begin with, which, you know, as I said, sort of a mid uh, gray. I could have made it lighter, but um, I do have the idea of, uh, no surprise to anyone out there, of using white gouache <laughs> later on. And uh, to make that white gouache uh, pop, uh, again, for contrast uh, purposes, uh, I began with a, a fairly dark uh, gray at the outset. Well, you can kind of see how this is going to go. The key thing to remember is that uh, the, the lettering is black in this area, and just because of the design of the YouTube logo, it's uh, the outside of the lettering, this sort of TV screen-shaped area, uh, that's going to go dark. Well, let me go ahead and finish all this up in time-lapse. Okay, now it's time for a fun little technique that I'm pretty sure I have never taught in one of these videos before, and that is the technique of using an old uh, toothbrush for spattering paint onto the surface of the illustration. Now what I'm doing is uh, taking uh, the dark gray paint and applying it to the brush like so. And I want to show you on a piece of scrap paper uh, my technique for uh, sort of flicking paint onto the paper, and I hope this will show up uh, in the video. But I'm, I'm pointing it down and then just sort of flicking like so. And hopefully this shows up and you see those little black dots. Um, and that's what I'm going to be doing now uh, to the actual surface of the illustration. I'll do just a little bit of this real time and then we'll move on to uh, doing the rest of it in time lapse. You got to be careful. You got to be sort of gentle with the way you do this because sometimes you'll overdo it and end up with too dark of a blob. Um, and this really is sort of a subtle effect. I don't know if it's going to come off so dramatically just with these first few uh, flicks. But one thing you can do is have a uh, piece of uh, tissue nearby if one of them looks a little too dark to you. Uh, or is, has sort of spattered in an unusual direction, you can actually sort of pick those things uh, up, uh, remove them with the tissue. Well, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, do the rest of this spattering technique uh, all in time lapse.
All right, well, we're done with the uh, toothbrush flicking part of the illustration process, and I thought I would do a sort of zoom in just a little bit. Can't get too close, unfortunately, but I wanted you to see a little more this uh, texture that is created by way of the uh, toothbrush. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and refocus one more time and do one last thing before removing the uh, tape and the scrap paper. All right, so I'm going to come in with my uh, brush here and just add a little bit of a drop shadow uh, or uh, an edge shadow, I guess you would call it, right along here. I'm doing this now while this piece of um, tape, scotch tape, is in place because, as you can see, it helps you sort of magically have this super clean uh, line at the edge of the stonework. And uh, once I've got this in place and have allowed it to dry, I am going to remove the tape. It's kind of a fun part of the illustration because it does, as you can see, there's all these spatterings all over the place and it sort of feels messy. And then you remove the, uh, the tape and the scrap paper and suddenly, oh, it looks so clean. Um, so let me go ahead, I'll let this dry, and then we'll do the uh, unveiling, the removing uh, of the tape and scrap paper. Okay, so I'm going to go back and uh, begin with this uh, last one first, I guess. Peel this off, and you can see how it has valiantly protected the white surface of the Bristol board underneath it. Like I said, just kind of a cheap thrill, I don't know why, but I love it. Uh, it just uh, looks so... Nice to me when uh, you see these perfectly clean little edges. So that's a little trick uh, for you uh, that, you know, is not only for this um, toothbrush spattering technique. You could use this anytime you're doing watercolor and you want a nice clean line uh, around the edge of your illustration. Well, the next thing for me to do is to add uh, cracks in the stone. I've just decided to do this because I thought it would be uh, a fun little addition to the project. And uh, I'm uh, pulling out a Dixon Ticonderoga, my sort of pencil of choice here. And I'll do just a little bit of this uh, real time, uh, adding in uh, a few cracks that will split up the um, surface area and somehow, uh, to my eyes anyway, add to this effect of the whole thing appearing that it's made out of stone. Now I would um, urge you, as uh, so often I do in almost every one of my videos, to consider looking at uh, reference. Uh, yes, even for something as mundane as uh, cracks in uh, concrete or stone, um, you know, the, your idea of the way that stone uh, cracks into fragments is maybe different from the way it really does, and so that's what I did. I looked at um, photos, uh, uh, you know, did a Google image search for uh, photos of cracked uh, concrete, and uh, that assisted me in sort of deciding uh, some of these patterns that I'm drawing right now. Well, let me go ahead and uh, finish this part off in time lapse. All right, now that I've got these cracks in place, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in uh, with watercolor a little bit of darkness. Go ahead and dab some of that down. Got a little too dark uh, right from the get-go. Um, but this is going to help these um, cracks show up uh, much better than they would if I just left them as pencil. Notice, uh, and I don't know if you can see this, but I am keeping all of these um, lines kind of on the upper left, imagining that there is a uh, light source on the upper left that is casting um, tiny little shadows along the edges of each one of these fragments. So it is worth keeping in mind your light source as you uh, do an illustration like this uh, and having all these little um, cracks in the surface sort of obey the the rules of your uh, your light source and this will especially come into play uh, later on when we bring out the uh, the white gouache well let me go ahead and finish this off yet again uh, in time lapse so as to uh, conserve time and then we'll move on to the next stage in the process All right, well, that's all in place, and uh, you know, it would not be a Mark Crilly coloring video unless I used about 12 different <laughs> types of art supplies uh, for adding the coloring, and that's why I'm going to bring out this marker, a Le Tracet 
uh, Pantone marker. Don't even know if these are still in production, but it's just going to be gray. It's going to help me add some interior uh, shadows to each one of these letters. Now, you know, I could do this with watercolor. I could do it with uh, colored pencil. Um, but uh, I just thought it would be fun to do it with markers. And the, I, I think, you know, anyone who's used markers knows that it's uh, it's just very easy to drop in a nice, clean, uh, sort of linear uh, type of color compared to, you know, using the brush uh, to follow along with these uh, very clean lines uh, can be tricky. And, and indeed, they ended up quite wobbly when I uh, first did those lines uh, at the beginning. But you get the idea. I'm putting all of these uh, shadows on the upper left, again, uh, bearing in mind the uh, light source and where each one of these shadows would fall. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue that process all through the rest uh, of the chiseled out uh, lettering. Now I thought just to add a little visual interest, I might take some of these pieces and actually, uh, with the watercolor, kind of blacken them out as if they had completely uh, chipped off altogether. Um, and uh, yeah, that just uh, sort of spice things up a little uh, uh, so that you don't have this uniformity all throughout the piece. And another thing I thought I would try, just for fun, is to maybe suggest that some of the pieces have sunken in just a little. Um, and uh, I can achieve that effect by way of dropping in just a little bit of uh, shadow along one edge. In fact, you know, you can sort of see it as uh, they've, they've dropped in just on one side a little, you know, maybe diagonally um, recessed just a, a touch into the, uh, the rest of the concrete there. So that's just one little uh, extra touch that I'm kind of deciding to do on the fly, but I think in, I, I wanted to at least show you what I was doing since it, uh, it may have, um, you know, uh, kind of a big effect in terms of uh, adding variety to the, this surface. Well, the next thing for me to do, and I don't think I even have to hit the pause button to do this, is to uh, pull out uh, my trusty black Prismacolor. And um, normally I would allow time for watercolor to dry. I think if I just um, remember to stay away from those areas, uh, I'll be all right. But what I'm going to do is take the black Prismacolor and just use it to uh, further define uh, some of these uh, lines here. Basically, uh, at this uh, point in the process, it becomes a little bit instinctual, you know, uh, my choices in terms of uh, uh, grabbing different tools and trying to achieve different effects. But uh, I did want to show you that there's a variety of um, uh, different things that you can do with the black Prismacolor um, prior to the final stage in the process. And one thing that I wanted to do is, you know, we get a lot of these uh, speckles here that are a result of the um, paintbrush that we used earlier. But I wanted to add with the black Prismacolor some things that are maybe a little more like streaks or um, uh, slightly more complex um, irregularities in the surface so that it's not only those dots that we're seeing. Um, again, you know, there's uh, my goal is, is to add variety to the surface. Um, I think the more uh, variety there is, the more solid it looks, at least to my eyes, and uh, that's sort of the goal, is to create this sense of uh, solidity uh, in the surface. And somehow that, that seems to be achieved by way of uh, adding varieties, uh, different areas having different colors. And I mean, the more uniform a surface is, I think the, uh, the flatter it, it appears, or just sort of lacks that solid feeling. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, tightening things here with the uh, black Prismacolor, and then I believe we will be ready to pull out the magical <laughs> white gouache. Okay, well now it's time for the final step in the process, and that is, of course, to bring out the white gouache. Now, we joke a lot about how I uh, am addicted to white gouache. <laughs> on this channel, um, but this project in particular is really well suited uh, for the strengths of white gouache. You can see me adding in these little highlights. Uh, generally speaking, it's always going to be on the lower right hand side uh, of each one of these little areas. And um, as I do that, it uh, really creates this 
nifty little illusion. In fact, I'm going to add uh, just a little along here as well. It looks super bright white right now, but in my experience, um, as it dries, it tends to uh, dull down a little. Uh, so that's why I'm sort of just leaving it as is, uh, kind of banking on that. Um, you know, it goes from this bright white to more of a very light gray over time. Uh, so anyway, you can sort of see my technique here as I go along, um, cheerfully adding little white highlights, <laughs> sprinkling them <laughs> on the happy little illustration. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm always, uh, no matter how many times I do this, I'm always sort of newly astonished at how effective this is in terms of tricking the eye and making you believe that this, um, you know, piece of Bristol board has suddenly turned into a piece of uh, concrete. And uh, indeed, if, if this does stay super bright white, I may have to tone things down. It starts to look like polished concrete. I mean, to, to have such a sparkly uh, white edge to it might be a bit too much. But um, I will make that decision later on. For now, let me go ahead and uh, kick it into time-lapse one last time. Boy, you know, Old Man Time-lapse came back with a vengeance this week. <laughs> You guys needed me. This channel can't survive without me. Uh, so uh, we're going to let him do his magic, and we'll finish this all off in time lapse. All right, well, there's my video on how to illustrate a stone or concrete type of surface. Let me know what you thought of it. Maybe we can turn this into a series now. Uh, I remember last time when I did the wooden surface uh, video, a lot of people took that idea and applied it to their own logos, their own completely different designs. It was a lot of fun to see. So fingers crossed, maybe we'll get to see uh, other people doing similar such things with this technique. But for now, let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like Brody's Ghost and Miki Falls, my two graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, and coming soon, The Realism Challenge out May 5th. There is a, uh, a link to the pre-order uh, in the info box. Big thanks to anyone who considers picking up that book, but it is high time I lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.